Hi, I'm a terrible thing, and welcome to the studio. So, today I'm going to be doing something a little different, trying out a different kind of content for the channel, but that I conceived of doing since the beginning. This is going to be my first horror movie review. I went back and forth quite a bit on what movie I should review for this. Should I do a movie I know really well, one that I really like, one that I don't? And I guess I just felt like, for the first review, that it should be something iconic. But let's be serious, I have like 12 viewers, and if I could get any steam under this channel, the video will probably get lost in the shuffle. So ultimately, I just went with a movie I'd never seen before that a friend of mine asked me to do. So this is my review on The Girl on the Third Floor. It's a movie that you can watch on Netflix. I should probably say up front that said friend hates this movie. She said that it was one of the stupidest movies she had ever seen, and I'm not really sure why she was so vehement about me covering it. So the way I'm going to do this is, first, I'm going to give you a bit of background on the film, and let you decide how you feel about it, and then you can decide for yourself if you want to give it a watch or not. Then we'll do a bit more of an in-depth dive into spoiler territory, and I'll break the movie down a bit more. The film tells the story of the Kotches, a couple who are moving into a dilapidated old house. Don Koch moves in first to renovate the place and prepare it for the arrival of his pregnant wife, Liz. As he works, he meets some of the locals, and we learn that the house is assorted history and hides a number of dirty little secrets. The Girl on the Third Floor was written and directed by Travis Stevens, who is apparently a really prolific producer, but who I know fuck all about. It was filmed in a reputed actual haunted house in Illinois, and according to Stevens, the story is loosely based around the true history of the house. It stars Trieste Kelly Dunn as Liz Koch and professional wrestler CM Punk as Don Koch, who actually reminds me a little bit of Bruce Campbell, mildly in the way he looks, but very much in his mannerisms and his voice. And it's here that we come to my first issue with the film. It feels like it wants to be a horror comedy, but it never really tips far enough in that direction. But it's just a little too camp to be scary, and second, the character's completely unlikable. The guy is a cheating, womanizing drunk with zero redeeming qualities, and his wife is a knockout who completely financially supports the guy, after literally having left Chicago because he defrauded a bunch of clients at his firm or something. Yet the film would have you believe that she's this strong, independent woman who's going to put up with his bullshit. Stevens bought the actual house in Illinois and remodeled it to use as their headquarters for his production company. And I think filming there, as the remodeling was being done, was a stroke of brilliance. The set is gorgeous, and the practical effects work is top-notch. If you have an eye for cinematography, there are a lot of really great shots in this film. All in all, I'd say give it a watch. It's not a great movie, but it's really not a bad one either. I had fun with it. It was a little confusing at times. Now let's dive deeper. Don arrives at the house ahead of his wife with their dog, Cooper. From conversations with Ellie Mueller, the local pastor, and a local bartender, Don learns about the house's history and its seemingly strange power to ruin the lives of specifically straight men. Strange paranormal phenomenon begin occurring around the house. Mucus seeping from the walls and light sockets. Don even gets a showerhead money shot. Also, there are these marbles rolling around the floor, and Don eats one? Then this happens. <laughs> that looks horrific. 
Old pipes. They don't look so old. <sighs> Can I help you with something? Bitch, you think we don't know you're a ghost? And only the time it takes him to give her a tour of the house, he's also giving her a tour of his dick. Almost immediately, the ceiling caves in, revealing some kind of viewing platform in the attic. Did you somehow miss this when you were buying the house, Don? Did you not go into the attic? Don's friend and ex-co-worker Milo shows up to give him a hand, but finds out about the affair. They have it out. Don tells Milo to get lost if he can't follow the bro code. Milo is lured into the basement, where he's killed by Sarah with a sledgehammer. I thought the whole point of the house testing people was to capture womanizers and such. So why did Sarah kill Milo? During a FaceTime call with Don, Liz spies Sarah walk past the doorway. Don denies anyone else could be in the house, but installs security cameras the following day. And then Sarah kills his dog. Bad movie! Bad movie! We don't kill puppies! The cops are fucking useless. First completely realistic thing in this film. So Don waits for Sarah to show, and then gives her the old hammer treatment, and tries to cask of Amontillado her in the basement. But Liz calls to distract him, and he completely flips out on her, and then hangs up. She doesn't call back, or text, nothing. Of course, when Don gets back downstairs, the body is miraculously gone, because, you know, ghost. Searching the house for her, he finds drawings on the walls of some kind of birdman in his friend's decaying head. Lovely. Don is then attacked by a deformed little girl who makes a marble burrow up under his skin, forcing him to cut it out with a blade. Now, I'm going to go on record here saying... I love the practical effects here. And the whole marble under the skin is proper unsettling. But there are some things that I really don't get. The little girl, who we later find out is named Sadie, and is presumably the titular girl on the third floor? Who the fuck is she? Is she supposed to be the daughter of Sarah and the bird mask guy? And can someone tell me why she has teeth in her forehead? Liz finally gets to the house, coming in like the last time she spoke to her husband, he wasn't raving like a friggin' lunatic, and everything is just peachy keen. And Sarah's there, claiming to be Don's assistant. Ellie shows up and warns Liz about the house's effects on relationships. Liz starts having hallucinations where she sees the house is full of men getting ready for the show. She goes up to the attic where she watches Sarah performing S&M with a guy in a bird mask. And hey, hey. I get it. She sees Sadie in the corner, playing with marbles. On the stairs, Liz gives an exposition dump that could back up the toilet, and explains that the brothel owner apparently killed Sadie and then killed her. Again, why? Is Sarah the mother? Was the owner a serial killer? I don't know. In the bedroom, Don appears, confesses, and begs for Liz's forgiveness. But finally, finally, Liz tells him to fuck off. But it's not really Don. It's Sarah in a Don suit. Liz flees the house, but not before making cherry pie out of Sadie's head. Ellie explains to Liz that the ghosts of the house test men's wills, another exposition which I don't think we really need. We're smart enough to understand this. Explain forehead mouth. Then Liz goes back to get a body out of the which is completely unclear as to who it's supposed to be. I assumed it was Don. Only later did I find out from reading the Wikipedia article that this is supposed to be Sarah. Show us the tombstone or something. So, then Liz smartly gets the hell out of Dodge. Takes a little time for herself to deal with her trauma before meeting a really wonderful man who respects her and then helps her raise her daughter as if it were his own. I'm just kidding. She moves back into the house anyway. What? That's the way the movie ends. I don't know. 
These people make no sense. But anyway, thank you for watching my first of what I hope will be many reviews. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. If you've seen this one, let me know what you thought of it. And until next time, I'm a terrible thing. Bad movie!